Yes, hello again to all of my YouTube subscribers out there and the very warmest of welcome backs to your favourite classic dirt bike TV channel where we continue with our look around the 2022 Telford Classic Dirt Bike Show. And in this part three episode, we're going to start by taking a look at the Rickman motorcycles stand that had some very nice examples of these legendary bikes on display. Now the history of these Rickman motorcycles really stretches back to around the 1960s when Don and Derek Rickman uh, first began building uh, these iconic frames which uh, initially were all mainly for scrambles bikes but uh, later uh, they began supplying frames for road racing bikes and uh, from about 1966 they even uh, produced some iconic road bikes as well uh, and uh, you may remember uh, if you're a certain age, uh, the mighty uh, Rickman Honda and of course the Rickman uh, Kawasaki's that uh, had that big inline four-cylinder motors in these uh, Rickman chassis. Well, this uh, beautiful example here with the Triumph uh, twin motor and blue uh, paint scheme is uh, just one of the many different permutations of frame and engine combinations that uh, Rickman motorcycles provide to their customers and uh, if you're not that great at uh, throwing the spanners around and tackling uh, one of their frame kits yourself you could still uh, get the Rickman guys to build the bike for you and have it painted in whichever colour that uh, takes your fancy. But as I've mentioned before, the uh, workmanship and engineering that goes into these Rickman uh, frames is just uh, first class and uh, also uh, the, uh, these frames carry the motor's engine oil uh, in the chassis. And uh, back in the day, these Rickman fuel tanks and uh, side panels would have been made in fiberglass and as far as I'm aware, Rickman still use the very same moulds from the 1960s to make these GRP tanks and bodywork uh, panels but uh, there's certainly something about these Rickman bikes that catches your eye because they're still basically a 1960s design but having one with this lovely Triumph twin motor in it just uh, makes it look that little bit more uh, extra special. And so as we move down to the front end of this lovely bike, a quite large front brake hub on this particular bike and they certainly look like these hubs could do quite a good job of slowing down this twin cylinder machine. And I think I'm right in saying here that these hubs have been taken from a matchless bike, which of course are then machined to fit what looks like a pair of Italian uh, Seriani uh, forks. But again, this bike uh, even has these old school ball end levers that they had uh, way back in the 1960s. And uh, I'm not sure uh, what one of these Rickman tri uh, Triumphs would uh, set you back if you wanted to actually buy one. But uh, for me personally, if I was looking for a bit of nostalgia as a little keepsake for a future investment, then uh, maybe this nice uh, blue version of a Rickman Classic would do me uh, very nicely. Uh, thank you. And so as we move along to another example of one of these Rickman uh, machines, uh, uh, with this example here, you can uh, see another uh, single cylinder motors being fitted into this bike. And uh, this time it certainly looks like it's a big matchless uh, single uh, cylinder engine and uh, as I said uh, the many different variations of power plants that you can fit into these Rickman chassis is uh, almost endless. And uh, once more another uh, different type of uh, colour scheme and uh, this bike here I can see also has a pair of Hagen classic uh, shocks uh, bolted on uh, to the back but of course uh, if you buy one of these Rickman uh, frame kits you can uh, fit uh, whatever make of uh, front and rear suspension units uh, that you like. But this big long stroking matchless motor is 
It's certainly a thing of beauty, and I'll wager that it sounds absolutely fantastic uh, through that big bore uh, straight through exhaust pipe. Although I'm certainly no expert on these big matchless engines, so I'm not going to embarrass myself here by guessing its model number or type, as uh, I already get inundated uh, with my YouTubers uh, correcting all of my inaccuracies with regards to my uh, information. So I think in this particular case here, it's probably best just to keep quiet and let uh, all of you matchless experts out there make your own mind about what uh, you're looking at. But over the course of the weekend at the Telford Show, there were many different uh, variations of these uh, nice Rickman uh, machines scattered all over the exhibition halls and uh, some of them you just couldn't gain any access to as they were so tightly packed together but uh, this couple of beauties here on the Rickman motorcycle stands uh, were just uh, two of the lucky ones that I did uh, manage to work around but uh, whether you're a four-stroke fan or uh, maybe you like your smaller two-strokers from back in the day, the chances are that the these Rickman guys will have a, a classic that fits your own personal requirements. And when you do buy one of these lovely bikes, you even get uh, one of these Rickman handlebar pads as an added bonus just to give your bike that little bit of uh, extra prestige. But the manufacturer is uh, still uh, using these old school uh, ball end levers that were fitted to these bikes back in the day and also a nice uh, decompressor has been fitted in this case to help you uh, kick over that massive matchless uh, motor but uh, these are all uh, top quality uh, pieces of motorcycle merchandise and uh, normally these Rickman bike builders only use the very best parts uh, available and uh, when you bring all of the bits and pieces together along with the motor of your choice and bolt them in place in one of these Rickman chassis then it normally turns out something uh, like the two bikes that we've uh, just seen in this clip which uh, of course can either be a lovely old British built Triumph twin or in this case here a big single cylinder uh, matchless. But certainly a lovely uh, pair of bikes and uh, who wouldn't want uh, at least one of these bikes uh, sitting in their uh, workshop or garage. Now you certainly couldn't visit a classic dirt bike show without making a call on Bill Brown's Wolfsport stand as uh, Bill and his Wolfsport company have been involved in uh, motocross for quite some time now. And uh, as you can see here, he's uh, brought along a few of his uh, 490 Michael uh, twin shock racers with a selection of the parts bolted onto them that are supplied through his uh, MichaelMX.com uh, website. So maybe if you need a vital component for your old uh, German Michael, then you're almost certain to find it uh, in there. But uh, Bill Brown, without doubt, is certainly one of the great ambassadors of our chosen sport and he supports many local motocross and trials organisations with either sponsorship or other world sport related items and he currently uh, supports many of the top riders in both trials and motocross uh, with support or uh, sponsorship. But not forgetting... Uh, that Bill is still very active in the twin shock racing scene and his famous uh, number 53 Michael bike can still be seen uh, tearing up big roosters at some of the bigger uh, twin shock race events around the UK. And uh, when you stop to think that uh, before uh, Bill Brown actually uh, created the Wolfsport brand, he was an agricultural student and uh, also a miner at one time and a uh, mechanic and uh, would you believe it uh, he even was a professional uh, pole vaulter uh, back in the day and it's probably uh, pretty fair to say that uh, his uh, past career is even more colourful than the superb designs on his world sport uh, merchandise but these rear uh, RPM piggyback shocks are again supplied 
by uh, Will Sport and uh, as is of course uh, many of the other components that are fitted uh, to this uh, 490 uh, twin shocker. But uh, then again if you don't uh, like the look of the red colour scheme on that Michael you can have your uh, machine done in white uh, like this example here. Although, as I said, Michael, spare parts are really not an issue at World Sport HQ because you may remember that Bill Brown bought the tons of Michael parts from the German factory when they went out of business in the late 1980s. So if you can't find that precious part that you're looking for for your Michael at World Sport, then it's probably best just to forget it. Although when you do think how competitive these 490 Michaels still are, even in uh, 2022, and if you were to put a top rider on one of these twin shockers, they'd uh, certainly give a modern bike a good scrap uh, on the racetrack. But uh, once again, a bit more uh, wealth sport uh, merchandise bling for your Michael with these uh, blood red coloured anodized uh, alloy ignition cover and uh, that rear uh, brake pedal, which of course adds another dimension for personalising your own uh, particular machine. And on the subject of top riders, we have the Cheshire Charger here himself there on the right, the legendary Pete Mathia, who was and uh, still is regarded as one of the UK's top Michael uh, Twin Shock riders. But certainly a couple of very nice Michael machines there from the very busy Wealthsport stand. Okay, moving along once again as we return to the Phil Denton engineering stand to take a look at this lovely Honda CR250 Evolution machine. Now apparently this bike here was uh, handed over to the Phil Denton workshops by a customer to have it uh, freshened up uh, and uh, they told me that uh, they did say that this actual bike was in quite good original condition uh, at the time uh, although the PDE uh, geniuses of course then uh, set to work on the bike and uh, what you see here is the end uh, result. Now as uh, competitive Evolution bikes go, these CR250s are uh, probably one of the most popular machines for racing in the Evolution class and uh, even scruffy barn find condition bikes are still fetching quite good money because uh, spare parts are plentiful if you're uh, in the market to restore uh, one of these bikes. And again of course uh, these CR250s were powered by Honda's 250 reed valve two-stroke power plant which uh, was a pretty powerful and compact little motor uh, to be fair but uh, it was reliable and rugged and it had a, a good usable uh, spread of uh, power but again the uh, Denton team have come up trumps once more uh, with another quality restoration on this uh, 250 Honda. But I must admit, at first glance and taking a look at this bike at the show uh, on the day, I just I thought immediately that it was a brand new CR250 that had just been removed from its packing crate and then placed uh, onto this uh, stand at uh, the show. But uh, it looks like that expansion chambers also had a bit of the refurbish treatment at the Denton uh, workshop. But uh, again, I'm, I'm sure that the owner of this bike was to be reunited with this machine over the course of the weekend and uh, he, or maybe even her, uh, was to pick the bike up at the show. But uh, it would have been great to see their first impressions when they saw their old uh, dirt bike for the first time since its uh, restoration. And it looks like uh, replacement wheels have also been added here with these very nice uh, SM Pro Platinum Alloy uh, wheels but uh, you can be certain that uh, everything's been given a good going over here by the PDE workshops and including these front hydraulic uh, disc brakes. 
But you have to say the uh, quality on these Honda uh, restorations are uh, just first class and the rear of the bike here of course again has undergone the same treatment as the front with uh, brand new brakes and of course uh, rebuilt uh, wheels. Now an alloy uh, tailpipe fitted here at the rear and uh, it's actually uh, just a pity that we can't uh, hear this bike running because as you know uh, these Honda CR250 Evolution bikes just sound uh, fantastic. But again, uh, just one of the many lovely bikes on display at the 2022 Telford weekend. Uh, okay, there were uh, maybe not as many exhibitors this year as in previous years, but uh, when you see uh, machines uh, such as uh, these Evolution Honda bikes, it certainly makes up for the lack of content around the halls and I'm pretty sure that the owner of this fantastic bike will be super pleased when he's uh, reunited uh, with it once again. And so moving uh, right along, uh, now if you're a die-hard Husqvarna fan then you may enjoy taking a look at this lovely trio of four-stroke Husqvarnas that HVA Factory uh, put together for the American Twin Shock uh, race team for the VETS MXDN event at Farley Castle in 2021. Now these uh, lovely Husqvarnas here are absolutely bristling with all of the latest products and parts that HVA can supply for your aging Husqvarnas and uh, if you're a fan of massive four-stroke singles in your motocross bikes then these uh, huge 570cc Husky engines should suit you perfectly. Now as far as I'm aware uh, these big four banger engines uh, use the later Husqvarna uh, bottom ends uh, with the older air-cooled uh, barrels and cylinder head fitted uh, onto the top. Now I don't know for certain uh, what's actually been done with regards uh, the tuning and upgrades on these motors but you can almost guarantee that uh, these bikes are fitted with all of the latest uh, race cams and uh, valves etc so as to uh, be able to satisfy the need for speed from uh, those American team of uh, Doug Dubach, uh, John the Junkyard Dog Dowd and of course the legendary uh, Mike Brown. Now, although it's uh, quite an intimidating piece of engineering when you look at these big four-stroke Husky motors and although they uh, do look quite bulky and unwieldy, uh, they're certainly uh, never short of horsepower when it comes to hustling them around uh, a racetrack. And uh, if you were uh, one of the lucky few who attended the VETS MXDN event at Farley Castle in 21, then you'll uh, no doubt already have had the pleasure of seeing these big huskies in action and uh, with the likes of uh, Doug Dubach and uh, John Dowd and uh, Mike Brown who were all part of the American team uh, it must have been uh, quite a sight to see them all in action while they were riding these uh, superbly prepped uh, Husqvarna bikes. But uh, some very nice graphics here on these uh, fuel tanks with the riders names and of course that uh, American uh, flag emblazoned uh, on the side. Again just a single tailpipe on these Huskies as uh, some of these big 570s in the past often had twin tailpipes at the rear with a pipe uh, on either side. Now at the rear end of these big Huskies a nice pair of uh, SP piggyback suspension uh, units and I think uh, these could be a pair of uh, twin shocks that were supplied by Steve Plain uh, motorcycles and uh, they certainly look very good quality and uh, those gold anodized uh, shock bodies uh, certainly seem to fit in uh, just right with some of the other gold colored components on these machines. And so as we move to the front of the machine. Uh, these Husqvarna forks again uh, look uh, quite serious heavy duty items and are uh, more than likely uh, borrowed 
from one of the later uh, model Huskies and uh, not the old uh, 1983 bikes that I think uh, these machines are based upon. Although I have to say I don't uh, recognise these uh, hubs here which uh, could again be from a later Husky or maybe even a different make of motorcycle altogether but uh, they do look like they could uh, still do quite a good job of slowing down what uh, is by all accounts a substantial uh, size of uh, motorbike with uh, probably the relative uh, weight to go uh, along with it. But uh, once more in the Bikes Controls Department, uh, more exotic parts here again from the HVA factory with uh, those quality uh, Magura uh, levers and uh, cables and throttle gasser. And of course we also have the handlebar pad which uh, naturally uh, showcases uh, some of the parts that you can buy to upgrade your favourite uh, Husky uh, racer from HVA factory. And they've even uh, fitted uh, their bikes with these personalised Husqvarna uh, grip covers, which uh, I expect are just to keep the grips uh, clean and free from any contaminants uh, prior to them uh, leaving uh, the start line. Now, each of these uh, Husky bikes had a price tag of £24,000 stamped on them, and uh, whether that was uh, the for sale price or what it actually costs for HVA factory to build each bike, I don't know, but uh, without doubt if you'd uh, just had a recent lottery win then you could easily afford all three of these historic Huskies that is of course as soon as you've handed over the £24,000 for each machine. Although uh, to be fair I expect that these kind of top race bikes are not uh, cheap to put together and if you're going to supply race bikes for a team of uh, world class riders from the USA then I'd expect that they'd have to be spot on and race ready and it certainly looks like the HVA factory boys have pulled out all the stops here to make uh, Mr. Dubach, Dowd and Brown get the machinery they most certainly deserved. Okay, so moving right along once again, we'll uh, take a quick look at a couple of bikes that were on display at the Boltaco Club UK stand. And uh, first up, we'll take a little gander at this very nice uh, Boltaco boat tail machine. Now, again, I've absolutely no idea of uh, what model uh, this is and or its motor size, although, uh, as I recall, these Spanish uh, Boltacos were called uh, the boat tails as that uh, rear body panel behind the seat was uh, like the upturned hull of a boat or ship. But uh, again, another lovely example of these Spanish uh, Boltacos, which were very popular in the UK during the golden days of the 1970s. But there's uh, certainly not as many of these kind of bikes taking part in vintage or twin shock uh, racing events now in these modern times but uh, the two stroke motor here certainly has a look of a 250 uh, with that AML concentric carburetor uh, fitted there to feed it with its uh, fuel. And once more the instantly recognisable forward facing uh, kickstarter which was uh, more or less a standard fitting on many of these 1970 Boltaco bikes but uh, they were still quite powerful uh, little engines and when you got them uh, set up just right and with the right rider in the saddle you could still uh, achieve some very good results on these uh, twin shock machines. And uh, once again these forks are more than likely a set of beater suspension units as uh, many of these uh, older Boltacos did have them it fitted to them uh, back in the day but uh, once more uh, another Spanish classic and I must say this is a very nice example of one of these uh, boat tail Boltaco uh, racers. Now also on the very same stand at this show we had this uh, what I think is a Mark 10 250 
I'll tackle Perth's side, but uh, as you know, I've been known to be wrong before in the past, and I expect that a few of my uh, subscribers will already be uh, typing a comment saying that uh, my information is incorrect uh, once again. Although I'm uh, pretty sure that this is a Boltaco motorbike with a frame, two wheels and an engine of some sort stuck in the middle there. But uh, <laughs> Boltaco were uh, certainly one of the top European off-road bike manufacturers back in the 1970s and uh, sales of these kind of Boltacos did really well in Europe and here in the UK. But again, it was the might of the big four Japanese companies of Suzuki, Yamaha, Kawasaki and Honda who were sending their machines to the UK and Europe in their thousands. And of course, the smaller companies like Boltaco just couldn't compete with regards to the quality, quantity and price of uh, their motorcycles. And it wasn't long before uh, these uh, quality European machines were then struggling uh, for sales. Although just before the uh, Japanese did come along, these uh, Persian Boltacos were the bread and butter of many uh, European motocross riders and the sales of their Sherpa trials bikes also did well in the early uh, 1970s. And uh, if you look hard enough, you can still occasionally come across examples from both the trials and motocross uh, versions of these uh, Boltaco bikes. Although as a first choice vintage uh, dirt bike, they're uh, now becoming a bit few and far between. But uh, I've got to say that this particular Persang here is certainly a little beauty and it uh, doesn't look like it's seen much uh, track action in quite some time. But it's still great to see one uh, how it would have been uh, seen in the shop window way back in the 1970s. And once again, I'm uh, pretty sure that these type of Parsang uh, fuel tanks were again made of uh, fiberglass back in the day. And uh, this example here may even still be an original fiberglass part, but uh, for looks, uh, practicality, handling and power, then uh, these Parsangs uh, had it all. And uh, they were so good, of course, that the late uh, Jim Pomeroy was one of the most notable riders to uh, race one of these uh, superb uh, Boltacos. But a nice couple of specimens there from the Boltaco Club uh, UK. Now also sitting on this Boltaco stand was uh, the great uh, Martin Lampkins trials bike that uh, he won the 1975 World Trials Championship on in that year and uh, this is his uh, original uh, Sherpa machine uh, nicely preserved in what I assume is its uh, stock condition from that particular year. But again I'm no expert on these Sherpa trials bikes but I'm pretty sure that all of you trials uh, YouTubers out there can relate to this very special machine which uh, not only still looks uh, great but it has that uh, added piece of motorcycling history to it with it being the great uh, Martin Lampkin's world title winning bike. Now you can catch a glimpse of the great man here on that uh, poster there in the background with this uh, very same uh, motorcycle. Now I'm pretty sure that the bike uh, wasn't being offered for sale on the day and uh, sometimes you just have to save these kind of bikes for future generations to look at and often when these kind of historic motorcycles are sold to private collectors they then uh, get locked away uh, where nobody uh, can see them but thanks to the Boltaco UK Club and of course uh, our classic dirt bike TV channel we can all uh, get a quick look at this uh, very rare bike uh, once again. So there you have it. I do hope you've enjoyed the latest selection of dirt machines from the 2022 Telford Classic Dirt Bike Show. We'll have many more examples from the show coming up next in part four. So uh, thanks again for taking the time to watch my video content and 
I'll see you all again very soon, right here on your favourite and number one classic dirt bike, TV channel. <laughs>